Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India We are, uh, what we are looking at in algebraic geometry is uh, 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 trying to look at things which are uh, which have uh, uh, which have an intrinsic meaning. Okay, so intrinsic means uh, uh, these are uh, certain uh, definitions and properties that you make or define, which depend only on the object and not on other uh, extraneous factors. So. Uh, for example, you know what we are worried about is we are worried about varieties, all right. And then, of course, the varieties could be, you know, they could be affine or quasi-affine, or they could be projective, or they could be quasi-projective. And when you say, when you say these things, you you are trying to say that the variety is either uh, sitting as an irreducible closed subset of some affine space or some projective space, or it is sitting as an open subset of such a set. Okay. So uh, uh, when we define variety, we are already thinking of it as sitting inside uh, somewhere either an affine space or a projective space. So there is this and, and uh, there is this fact that uh, 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 you are making it sit into inside something which gives a certain ambiguity okay because uh, you can you uh, for example if you take the line the line can sit inside uh, any uh, uh, affine space in any way okay. So you can think of the line uh, just as a uh, a1 you can also think of it as a one of the coordinate axis in a2 okay or even any other line in a2 uh, and you can also think of it as a line in 3 space a3 okay but the but in any case a line is a line okay so what is intrinsic about uh, the line is that it is a line all right uh, and what is extrinsic about it is the way you're putting it inside you're thinking of the line just as a line or you're putting it thinking of it as a line inside that the plane A2 or you are thinking of it as a line in 3 space which is A3 and so on. So these are, so you know what you must understand is that when we, uh, when we start working in, in algebraic geometry uh, start building the theory of varieties we always start by embedding uh, uh, your uh, object into some affine space or projective space even to define uh, a variety you have to think of it as sitting inside some affine space or projective space as an, as an irreducible closed subset or as an open subset non empty open subset of such an irreducible closed subset. But then finally what we want to really uh, analyze and define and analyze and study is not, uh, not uh, I mean we want to define and analyze and study only the uh, properties which are intrinsic to the variety we are not interested in uh, they should depend only on the variety and not the way in which it is embedded. Okay. So, the fact for example you know this saying that the line is one dimensional does not depend on whether the line is being thought of as a line uh, a, a1 or whether it is being thought of as a line in A2 which is a plane or whether it is thought of a line in, uh, in 3 space A3 whatever be the space in which you embed it it is a uh, it is still one dimensional. So, you see we so we say that dimension is a very intrinsic property because and, and in fact 
uh, at the our definition of dimension uh, we have seen that we have given the definition of dimension uh, uh, in two ways one is as a topological space we have given uh, we have defined the di dimension of variety to be uh, topological dimension and we also proved that you know this dimension is the same as if the if the variety is an affine variety then it is the same as the uh, cruel dimension of the affine coordinate ring of the variety okay so uh, so the moral of the story is that you know uh, 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 the definition that the dimension is uh, the topological dimension is a very intrinsic definition it just depends on the topology of the variety it doesn't depend on anything else okay whereas the definition that uh, that the dimension is the cruel dimension of the affine coordinate ring namely uh, the coordinate ring uh, uh, of polynomials on the variety okay uh, that ring the dimension cruel dimension of that ring is a dimension of the variety is uh, is another definition but that somehow seems to depend on that ring because that ring is it depends on uh, the way in which the variety is embedded okay if the affine variety is uh, is the affine variety could be embedded in so many affine spaces in so many ways as an irreducible closed sub variety and in each of those cases you will get a coordinate ring uh, your rings of polynomials okay but thankfully uh, for affine varieties we have seen that the coordinate ring itself is an invariant it is an intrinsic thing namely uh, if you take two affine varieties then they are isomorphic if and only if their affine coordinate rings are the same so which means that uh, uh, no matter you uh, in which in what way you embed the affine variety the moment you say affine variety you are considering uh, an affine variety is isomorphic to an irreducible closed subset of some affine space it could be an irreducible closed subset in an affine space of any dimension okay uh, and the dimensions could be different the they are like the same line being embedded in a plane or uh, being embedded in three space okay so the ambient uh, the bigger affine space in which your variety is embedded as a closed sub variety that could be different but still the ring of polynomials on that uh, variety they are all the rings are all isomorphic the affine coordinate rings are isomorphic so we express this by saying that the affine coordinate ring is a, is an intrinsic uh, uh, object that is defined connected with the variety okay now so you know this is what i'm trying to say uh, we are trying to uh, it's very important that uh, we we begin uh, by using extraneous or extrinsic things okay but then finally we try to uh, find out what are the things that are intrinsic okay so in that list comes uh, the affine coordinate ring of an affine variety okay which is intrinsic then of course uh, the other thing that i introduced is introduced was the local ring at a point the local ring at a point is uh, something that is uh, that is defined uh, in a very intrinsic way okay it is just defined using regular functions okay and uh, uh, the the point is that if you change the variety uh, up to isomorphism then the local ring will also change only up to isomorphism okay namely if you have a variety uh, and a point with an isomorphism carrying this variety to another variety and this point going to another point then the local ring of the original variety at at the given point is is, is isomorphic to the local ring of the target variety the isomorphic variety at the image of the point that is gotten by the image of this point okay so we say that the local ring is also something that's very uh, intrinsic namely if you change the variety up to isomorphism the local ring will also change up to isomorphism okay so uh, what we are going to talk about uh, so you know in, in that direction uh, 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 i want to introduce uh, uh, another important uh, ring associated with the variety in fact this is a not just a ring it's a field and it's called the function field of a variety okay so i i want to introduce that and i want to tell you that uh, uh, i want to uh, introduce it in a very intrinsic way and then show how to compute it for affine and projective varieties okay so uh, so let me put the title of the lecture as uh, the uh, function field of a variety the function field of a variety and uh, uh, so so what is it that you that we are, we are, we, are, we are going to do so you know the idea is uh, uh, 
uh, is very similar to uh, looking at uh, uh, the way in which we got the local ring at a point okay. So you know what we did is see if so we start with x a variety okay and uh, of course which means you know it is uh, could be affine or quasi affine or positive or quasi positive and uh, we have a point and then you know how do you how do you define the local ring uh, at a point of the variety. So normally what we did was uh, if you have a point small x in capital X then what we did is we defined O capital X small x this is a local ring of x at x to be uh, O capital X small x tilde modulo an equivalence relation okay and how was this equivalence and, and what was uh, this uh, uh, this tilde O capital X small x tilde these were just you know pairs of functions uh, which were regular in some open in, uh, in, in some Zariski open neighbourhood of the point x. So you know this this consisted of pairs of the form u, f such that uh, f is in O u and x belongs to u. So you are just looking at uh, uh, functions which are defined in on an open neighbourhood of the point x and which are regular alright and you took such two such pairs and then you know what is the equivalence relation the equivalence relation was that two such pairs will be identified if uh, they define the same function on the intersection okay. So you know u1, f1 is equivalent to u2, f2 if uh, 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 well f1 restricted to u1 is equal to f2 restrict I mean u1 intersection u2 is equal to f2 restricted to u1 intersection u2 where of course we you know you have to remember that x is both in u1 and in u2 so x is in u1 intersection u2 so u1 intersection u2 is a non empty open set so it is in fact dense okay and you are just saying that f1 restricted to u1 intersection u2 is equal to f2 restricted to u1 intersection u2 in other words these two functions uh, uh, can be glued together to give a bigger regular function on u1 union u2 okay. So uh, uh, in some sense uh, in the sense of complex analysis uh, we say that uh, these are two functional elements which are direct analytic continuations of each other okay. So uh, now of course uh, you can weaken this condition you could you could just say that f1 restricted w is equal to f2 restricted to w where w is an open neighbourhood of the point x which is contained inside u1 intersection u2 that is also enough because you know we are keep always we have proved this and we keep using this all the time that two regular functions uh, if they are equal on a non empty open subset then they have to be equal everywhere. Okay, this is true always, right? So, uh, uh, so the now you know, th so we got this local ring like this, all right? And uh, of course, we have seen uh, 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 we have seen that this uh, how to compute this local ring. Okay, uh, we have seen how to compute this local ring and uh, what it is in the affine case, what is it in the what it is in the projective case. We have seen it, all right? But now. Uh, what I am trying to say is if you want the function field it is very simple what you do is you just remove this restriction of uh, concentrating attention at a point okay just do not worry about the point and the beautiful thing is that you uh, uh, if you if you do not uh, concentrate attention at a point you go global okay you get uh, you get something global. So what you do is uh, put uh, k uh, x to be k x tilde to be uh, the set of all pairs u comma f such that f belongs to OU and now there is no restriction on u, u inside uh, x as an open subset open non empty Of course, here also, whenever I say f belongs to O U, uh, I am, I am. Uh, it is, uh, it is implicit. It's understood that U is an open subset of X. Okay, so U is a Zariski open neighborhood. Okay, uh, fine. So um, now you see. Um, so what is the difference between this and this? The difference is that here you are only taking open neighborhoods of the point small x. But here you are simply taking uh, any power, any non-empty open set, and you are taking a regular function on that. Okay, so you just drop attention 
to a point and lo and behold what you get is uh, you repeat the same procedure what you get is not a local ring you get a field okay. So uh, now what you do is again you define the same thing you define same equivalence relation u1, f1 is equivalent to u2, f2 if uh, 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 if and only if f1 restricted to u1 intersection u2 is equal to f2 restricted to u1 intersection u2 of course uh, for this uh, I mean you need not require it on all of u1 intersection u2 it is enough to even require it on open on empty open subset of u1 intersection u2 and you must always remember that uh, this very important fact that uh, 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 by definition uh, our varieties are all irreducible and therefore you take any non empty open subset of a variety it will continue to be irreducible it will be dense and uh, any two non empty open subsets of a variety will always intersect okay. So the, this is the problem that is the risky topology the problem is that the open sets are huge okay they are they, they are dense their closure is the whole variety uh, I mean of course non empty open sets they are huge and any two of them will intersect right and uh, well so it is just enough to require that f1 and f2 coincide in an open subset of u1 intersection u2 okay non empty open subset of u1 intersection u2. Uh, so this definition the, these equivalence is the same as equivalence here only thing is you are not focusing attention at a point alright and then you uh, put kx to be kx uh, tilde mod the equivalence okay. So of course when I write mod equivalence I mean I mean equivalence classes okay so this is a set of equivalence classes this is also a set of equivalence classes. Now the beautiful thing is that uh, just like in this case uh, the set of equivalence classes gave you a op uh, local ring okay you got a commutative ring which is a local ring uh, with ha which had a unique maximal ideal which was represented by functions which uh, uh, are regular in a neighbourhood of x and which vanish at x okay and in fact the representatives the local ring namely the equivalence classes were called germs of functions okay. So this is the set of germs of regular functions at the point x and every germ of a regular function is represented like this it is represented by a regular function on an open neighbourhood of, of the point okay. Now here uh, we call the elements here uh, well uh, they are kind of uh, they, they are called rational functions okay they are called rational functions and uh, 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 and basically they are to be thought of as uh, functions that are regular on an open set okay that is how you should think of rational functions. Uh, rational function is nothing but a regular function on an open set it is not a regular function on the whole variety but it is a regular function uh, uh, it may be a regular function only on uh, an open subset which may be a proper open subset okay. So that uh, which means that there could be points where it is not regular okay where, where, it, where, you, where you cannot think of where you might extend the function but it may not be regular right so uh, so let me write that down uh, elements uh, equivalence classes of kx are called rational functions They are called rational functions, so they represent. Uh, they well, they represent. Uh, uh, they are represented by a regular function on an open subset. All right, and uh, 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 further, you see this kx. This 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 is actually this is actually a uh, a field. Kx is a field, and why is that? So because you see, you see, you take two elements in kx. So you know. So you know I have this I have this map kx tilde to kx this is the quotient map it is a surjection so that is why I am putting this double arrow head and uh, this is a set of equivalence classes this is mod equivalence okay and what we are doing is you are taking if you give me a rational function u1, comma f1 uh, you send it to its equivalence class which I will indicate by putting a square bracket okay and uh, well if you give me another rational function u2 comma f2 uh, 
uh, I will send it to uh, so rather let me use u comma f and v comma g. So uh, this will go to well uh, v comma g round bracket followed by a square bracket the square bracket indicating the uh, equivalence class here and then how do you add these two guys it is very very simple uh, you add them like this you give me two rational functions you just add them on their intersection because you know as I told you we keep always using the fact that any two non empty open sets will intersect so u and v will intersect on, on the intersection both functions make sense so I could add them. So I can do this I can take this equivalence class and define this to be the sum alright and uh, uh, then in the same way I could define product you I can put product here and I can put product here okay. So depending on what your either sum or product can be defined like this and now I want you to check it is it is easy to check as in you must have done in this case that this this definition of addition and multiplication is independent of the choice of representatives because I have defined the sum when I define the sum of two rational functions I am actually taking the sum of the representatives and I am uh, I am taking the sum of the representatives on the intersection on the intersection of the domains where the representative functions are defined okay. So uh, and similarly when I do uh, for the product I, I also use representatives but then whenever you know uh, you use representatives you have to make sure that uh, your definition is correct it is well defined so you have to check okay. So check that uh, check well definedness that is a simple exercise that the same kind of exercise as you as you would have undergone for the case of a you know uh, for the local ring. So this will make uh, this will make uh, kx into a commutative ring uh, in fact uh, 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 you will have uh, uh, you will have that kx is a commutative ring of course it will be commutative ring because addition and uh, addition of functions and multiplication of functions is point wise and that is commutative because if they are the functions are taking values in the base field k which is commutative all right. So uh, it is a commutative ring with with, uh, with one to be with one being the uh, uh, the given by the pair x comma constant function one and uh, zero element given by the pair x comma constant function zero. Okay, so uh, it will be a commutative ring with uh, unity and with this as zero element. All right, and in fact, it's in fact not only that; it will in fact be a K algebra uh, because you know a regular function multiplied a regular function multiplied by a scalar is also a regular function because scalars are of course regular functions they are thought of as constant regular functions okay. So uh, so and so kx is a k algebra of course you know uh, in our discussion we always fix small k to be an algebraically closed field where we are working that is where we are uh, do studying our varieties so and this kx is a k algebra okay uh, all functions take values in small k all regular functions take values in small k and uh, well um, now the point is the following the point is well in this case uh, after you took if you if you took open neighborhoods of a point and then you uh, define this equivalence and when mod this equivalence you got a max you got a local ring you got a commutative ring which was also a small k algebra. Uh, but it was a maximal uh, it had a only one maximal ideal and therefore it became a local ring but the point is in this case uh, you do not get uh, the only maximal ideal you will get is 0 and so you will get a field. So why is this a field to show that this is a field I will have to tell you that every non-zero uh, element here uh, is uh, is invertible okay. And so if so you know if you take uh, u comma f uh, not equal to 0 0 element the 0 element is x comma 0 in kx okay. So then you know uh, what I want you to understand is that you see you took you take uh, 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 you take 
to take 0 take z of f okay see z of f inside uh, x will be a closed subset okay. So I what I want you to understand is that uh, whenever you take a, a variety and you take a regular function on it okay and you take the set of uh, the locus where it vanishes okay that is always that will always be a closed subset okay. So in fact you know uh, I should say it is a closed subset of u in fact because f is defined only on u you should not write x here you should be careful alright. So f the f is a regular function on u and mind you u itself is a variety u is uh, uh, any open subset of a variety is again a variety okay. So uh, uh, u itself is a variety f is a regular function on u okay and if you take the 0 se set of f namely the set of points in u where f vanishes that is going to be a closed subset of u okay because actually you know roughly the idea is that uh, the closed subsets are defined by vanishing of polynomials right uh, in the affine case uh, it is uh, in the affine case uh, they are common zeros of uh, uh, a bunch of pol uh, vanishing of bunch of polynomials and if, if you are in the projective case then it is uh, common zeros of a bunch of homogeneous polynomials okay in any case it is just vanishing of polynomials that gives the 0 the, the, the closed subsets for the Zariski topology and therefore if you take a regular function on uh, on a variety u, u, is, u is also a variety and f is a regular function on that then locally f is a quotient of polynomials and therefore looking at zeros of this regular function is like looking at locally the zeros of the numerator polynomial because locally f is a is looks like a numerator polynomial divided by denominator polynomial and the zeros of f will be just the zeros of the numerator polynomial okay and therefore essentially you are just looking at zeros of polynomials and therefore again uh, you are going to get a closed set okay. So uh, this is a closed subset and mind you uh, uh, z of f you know cannot be uh, uh, z of f cannot be u okay uh, z of f z of f is not equal to u because uh, if z of f is u that means f is identically 0 on u but then if f is identically 0 on u then f uh, is equal is equal to the 0 function which is identically 0 on x and that will contradict the fact that this these two are different elements of the uh, of the function field okay. So z of is not equal to u because uh, otherwise you will you will you will see that u comma f is the same as uh, u comma 0 and this is the uh, this is this is equivalent to x comma 0 which is a contradiction okay. So uh, 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 so I should say contradiction it is a contradiction to the fact that uh, uh, these two are different right. So that means 0 z, z of f is a proper closed subset of u so it is complement in u is again an open subset of u so you know so you know uh, u minus z of f inside u is non empty open and of course you know where a regular function does not vanish its reciprocal is also a regular function okay after all regular function is a locally uh, of the form quotient of polynomials where it will not vanish is where the numerator polynomial does not vanish if the numerator polynomial does not vanish okay already when you are writing the quotient the denominator polynomial cannot vanish if the numerator also does not vanish then its reciprocal. Uh, the reciprocal of these two numerator and denominator will give you also a rational uh, will again give you a regular function at that point locally okay therefore wherever a regular function does not vanish it is re reciprocal is also a regular function. So what happens is that you will get this pair uh, uh, u minus zf which is an open subset of u proper it is an empty open subset of u mind you it is this is actually mind you it is dense in x itself okay it is a non empty open subset of u and u is a non empty open subset of x so this is a non empty open subset of x so it is irreducible it is dense okay it's a huge open set okay and on this i have the function 1 by f 1 by f is certainly a regular function on that okay uh, so this this element if you multiply it with the original element u comma f what you will get is just x comma 1 you will get this okay by the definition of multiplication all right because after all uh, 1 by f and f are going to multiply to give you 1 
wherever f does not vanish okay and wherever f does not vanish is certainly a is a huge open set alright. Therefore uh, so what this tells you is that whenever u comma f is not the 0 element mind you this is the 0 element this is the 0 element in kx. So whenever something is not 0 it has a reciprocal there is something with which you can multiply it to get 1 this is 1 this is the 0 in kx and this is the 1 in kx okay. Uh, so here also when I write 1 equal to x comma 1 I mean this is the 1 in kx and this is 0 in kx okay. So what I have proved is that every non-zero element is I have a commutative ring in which every non-zero element is a, a is invertible so it is a field. So, so the moral of the story is that kx is a field and is a, is a field extension extension of k okay because it is a k algebra uh, so uh, you know it is a it is a it is an over ring of k it contains small k as a sub ring and whenever you have a larger ring which is a uh, whenever you have a uh, when the smaller when you have a ring extension and both are fields you it is actually a field extension okay. The smaller ring is k it is a field the larger one that we have con we have defined and constructed is the is also a field okay this is a field extension right. Now and this is called the uh, function field uh, it is called the function field of x. okay it is called the function field of x and what is so special about the function field of x. So the answer to that uh, geometrically is the following that the function field of x uh, 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 will give you all the information that is true on a large open subset of x okay you so this is the philosophical uh, importance this kx will contain all the information about x which you can find on a uh, on a large open set of course any non empty open set is large okay so you take any uh, general open set in x and you take properties that are valid on a general open subset of x then all those properties they will be captured by kx okay so kx geometrically captures what is happening on a large open set of x okay so kx captures captures the geometry on a general geometry of okay. So, uh, so the point is you see what I want you to understand is both in the local ring case and in the function field case you are just looking at pairs of functions okay you are, you, I mean you are just looking at pairs which consist of a regular function defined on an open set okay. Here you are only look concentrating on open sets which contain a given point and you get the local ring and the local ring contains all the information in a neighborhood of that point okay all inf information uh, uh, in a neighborhood of that point how the variety be how the variety behaves in a neighborhood of that point all that information is controlled by this and captured by this okay. Whereas if you want to know what is happening on a general open subset of x that information is captured by kx okay. So this is a you know uh, if you want to study uh, a general open subset of x if you have a geometric question about a general open subset of x okay then what you have to study is this if you have, if you have a question about what is happening at a point of x then the object you have to study is this the local ring okay. So these are two extremes okay and I will tell you how they are connected we are going to see how they are connected of course they are all connected by to each other and essentially they are all uh, I mean everything is done by commutative algebra okay. So, uh, so now now comes the following question uh, so you can ask uh, you can ask uh, uh, how are these things connected. So the first thing I want to tell you is that uh, you know we have maps uh, uh, 
Ah, so before that, um, yeah, we have maps, we have natural maps. Uh, o, O x, O x x, k x. Okay, there are maps like this. So, what is this map? Let f be a regular function on x. You just send it to uh, uh, since f is a regular function on of x, then I have the pair u x comma f and its equivalence class will give me a point uh, it will give me a give me an element of the local ring at this point x because the element the elements of the local ring at a point are simply germs of regular functions uh, defined on the neighborhood of the point and since f is a global regular function it is also a, a regular function uh, at that point so I can take its germ so this is a germ of f at the point and well you what I can do is on the other hand you know this is this map all right mind you that uh, uh, I can also send a map from here to here namely if you take u comma g uh, let me write uh, let me write v comma g what is this v comma g g is regular function on the open set v which contains a point x okay this is the germ of v this is the germ of g at the point small x okay and of course g this this open set v May, or may be a proper open set g may not extend to a regular function on the whole of x it may be restricted it might just be defined on this open set okay. Now but any uh, anything here I can further send it to the same thing here mind you I am I am using the same notation but the point is this equivalence is the equivalence in the local ring this is the equivalence in the function field okay okay so I am, but I am using the same square bracket. Now the point is that uh, of course you know there is also a map which goes like this directly and that is simply that is simply going all the way to x comma f which is just the composition of these two maps this this will also go to x comma f where again this square bracket is the equivalence class uh, here and this square bracket is the equivalence class here okay all right. So I have maps like this now the fact is that these maps are uh, well uh, the fact is that these maps are injective k algebra homomorphisms okay. So these are injective k algebra homomorphisms okay these are injective k algebra homomorphisms okay. So, uh, of course they are k algebra homomorphisms namely they are ring homomorphisms which uh, which are k linear okay so that is no problem it is very easy to see the point is the point is the injectivity. So the injectivity comes like this you see uh, that is also something that uh, uses again uh, this fact that you know I, uh, uh, if a regular if two regular functions are equal on an open set then they are uh, equal everywhere okay of course that non that, you know, that open set has to be a non empty open set of course uh, because you need a point to test you need a points to test whether uh, two functions are equal actually okay. So well you see you can see why this is why this is injective is very very clear because you know if x comma f is 0 okay then it means that f vanishes in a neighborhood of small x okay but that means f is equal to the 0 function in a in an, in a in an open set containing small x okay but then uh, if you use the fact that uh, uh, two regular functions if they are equal on a non empty open set they are equal throughout. So if f is if small f vanishes is in a, in a neighborhood of small x then it vanishes everywhere that means cap this f itself is 0 okay so that, that will tell you why this is injective and why is this injective that is also literally the same uh, same argument if you take a v comma g germ of a function g which is regular in this open neighborhood v about the point small x uh, if it goes to 0 here it means that it is equal to 0 on some uh, non empty open subset of v okay but in any case uh, that will also force it to be 0 everywhere in fact 
if this goes to 0 here it will tell you that g g is this is the 0 function on v okay and the 0 function on v extends to the 0 function on x okay and therefore this will itself be 0 alright. So, the moral of the story is both these ring homomorphisms have 0 kernel so they are injective ring homomorphisms and what is the moral of the story the moral of the story is the beautiful thing that the regular functions sit inside the local rings the local rings sit inside the function field this is uh, this is how the uh, uh, you know so the idea is that somehow when you are looking at it topologically you have the whole your you have the whole variety x you concentrate attention to a point uh, you get a larger ring okay if you have the whole variety x you have ox which is a regular functions on x okay now you you concentrate attention to a point you get a larger ring okay that is the local ring at that point okay which is larger than the uh, ring of regular functions and then on the other hand if you concentrate instead of concentrating at a point if you concentrate on an open set you will get a much larger ring which is in fact a field and that is the field of rational functions. Now what I want uh, you to understand is that you know in all these things nothing will go nothing will change if I replaced x by an open subset u okay. So uh, in fact what will happen is that in fact if u is an open subset of x uh, is open and small x is in u then you have we have a commutative diagram we have equalities in fact ox uh, to o uh, x x I mean at the level of local rings and at the level of function fields you are not going to have any difference so uh, so you know so I will put a hook arrow saying that you are considering this as sub rings what will happen is this will be the same as O u x is O u and uh, uh, and this will be the same as K u and this will sit inside okay. So if you if you uh, the function field depends only on an open subset of x so the function field of variety will not change if you replace x by an open subset. So kx the function field of x if you replace x by u uh, non empty open set then kx will be the same as ku by going to a non empty open set you are not changing the uh, function field and that is just reflection of the fact that the function field captures information on a, on a general open set. So if you go to a general open set the function field does not change okay and uh, the local ring at a point also depends only on a neighborhood of the point it does not depend on the ambient variety. So, whether you are considering x as a point of the open set u of capital X and calculating the local ring of small x at the of the variety u or whether you are calculating this local ring of small x with respect to the bigger variety ambient variety capital X you will get the same result okay. So, the local ring also depends only on a neighborhood of the point okay and of course uh, uh, the fact and what is what is what is happening here what is happening here is that you also get an inclusion like this you also get an inclusion like this because every regular function on x can be restricted to get a give you a regular function on u and these restriction maps restrictions of functions they are all injective because of the same old reason that if a regular function if two regular functions coincide on an open subset non empty open subset then they have to coincide everywhere or another way of saying it is if a regular function vanishes on an open subset then it is identically 0 it will vanish on the whole variety. So you see this is this is what happens if you if you go to an open subset and uh, why these two are equal is something that you can easily uh, you can easily you can get this equality in a in a very very easy way uh, namely what you do is uh, uh, you know you and any element of kx is of form u comma f where f is a regular function on u and you take the equivalence class and what do you have to do it is very very simple I, I should not use the same view let me use v comma g or even better let me use w comma h w is an open subset of x h is a regular function on w then I have this pair w comma h and its equivalence class is the rational function here okay and what will I send it it is very simple you see w is a non empty open subset of x 
u is a non empty open subset of x so they intersect so i can make sense of h also on the intersection that's what and that's the element i'm going to send it to so i'm simply going to send it to w intersection u comma h restricted to w intersection intersection u i take this uh, class and then i take its equivalence class and that is the element i'm going to send it i'm in principle i should write this as a map and you can see that this map will be a k algebra isomorphism but then i put equality because actually the f as far as the functions are, c are concerned i am simply rest restricting the same function so that's why i put equality there okay if you think of them as functions then you can uh, you can put equality here and you can put equality here okay so uh, if you think of them really as functions okay uh, of course you have to remember that uh, here you should think of representatives as, as functions on a non empty open set okay and here you must think of representatives as functions on a uh, regular functions on a non empty open set which contains the points from x that's the only difference okay so uh, so you have this you have this uh, you have this nice diagram all right and now what i have to do is to tell you uh, what this kx will be if x is an affine variety what this kx will be if x is a projective variety Okay, we need to understand what that is. Okay, we have already understood what the local rings are uh, when X is an affine variety or a projective variety. Okay, they are given by suitable localizations. Okay, uh, we uh, we have to repeat repeat this uh, extend this kind of uh, argument to uh, the function fields. Okay, so uh, so let me so let me just state the uh, let me just state the result. Then we'll probably prove it in the next lecture. So here is theorem. If X is an affine variety, then KX is isomorphic to quotient field field of AX, which is equal to OX. Okay, so if x is an affine variety then you know we have we have defined ax the affine coordinate ring of x and we have proved that that affine coordinate ring is equal to the uh, ring of regular functions okay and this equality being thought of as functions okay uh, uh, we put this equality because we think of a function here also as defining a function there and conversely okay and uh, what if, f, if x is projective if x is projective then uh, kx is uh, well let me put y so that I do not confuse if y is projective then ky is just you take the homogeneous coordinate ring of y okay the homogeneous coordinate ring is defined the same for a projective variety is defined the same way as the affine coordinate ring is defined namely you take the ring of polynomials of the ambient space that you are considering and then go modulo the ideal of uh, functions that vanish on the variety in this case of course you will have to take uh, pol hom you have to take polynomial ring in uh, uh, of the affine space over the projective space uh, in which this variety y is embedded and go modulo the ideal of y which will be a homogeneous ideal <coughs> and then you take this and then you know what you do is you take the zero ideal okay that's a prime ideal and this is localizing at zero and then i'll put another zero here saying that you are taking the, the degree zero part of the homogeneous localization of sy okay so this is degree zero part of the homogeneous localization S y at zero. Okay. So, uh, so here is the formula for the function field of an affine variety, and a, a nice formula for the function field of a projective variety. Okay. And uh, uh, and you know if you try to write out, uh, if you try to write out this kind of diagram, in, uh, including the uh, you know uh, the local rings and the quotient fields then what will happen is that uh, uh, you know if you take o x small x 
that is going to sit inside uh, kx and you know this kx is just ax uh, uh, quotient field of ax okay q represents the quotient field of ax that is kx that is what uh, this first part of the theorem says this is an isomorphism and we have already seen that this is nothing but ax localized at mx where mx is the maximal ideal in ax corresponding to functions that vanish at small x so I should have I should put small x here. So mx is equal to ideal uh, of functions uh, vanishing at x okay we have already proved this and we have this inclusion okay and uh, you must uh, recall a fact in, com uh, fra in, in, in from commutative algebra it is very easy if you if you have an integral domain okay then its quotient field will be the same as the quotient field of any of its localizations okay. The quotient field of uh, quotient field or field of fractions of an integral domain is the same as the quotient field or field of fractions of any of its localizations. In fact the quotient field is the largest localization okay it is a localization where you have inverted everything except the only element which you cannot invert which is 0 and 0 is a prime ideal okay and so you are localizing at the prime ideal okay so this q a x is just a x localized at the prime ideal 0 okay this is what it is you are inverting everything outside 0 right because localization at a prime ideal means invert everything outside the prime ideal in this case invert everything that is not 0 that will give you the quotient field. So this is the picture you get for the affine case okay and you will get a similar picture for the uh, for the projective case if you take O y y small y uh, point of capital Y where capital Y is a projective variety this is going to sit in side k y and what is going to happen is that the function field of k y will be just s y localized at the prime 0 degree 0 part and this will contain uh, uh, s y uh, localization at m y and degree 0 part where here m y so this is of course this diagram commutes this diagram commutes this isomorphism of the local rings has already been proved okay and this this isomorphism of the function fields that I have to prove and here again m y is equal to uh, uh, all those uh, ideal of ideal of homogeneous 